are you pregnant and looking for breastfeeding tips? Today, I am joined by the very special Dr. Robin Thompson, and we are going to share with you free newborn breastfeeding tips with the Thompson Method. If you are looking to be fully prepared, you are in the right place. So do hang around. We're going to talk about breast milk production. We're going to talk about planning for breastfeeding during your pregnancy. And we're also going to talk about the things to avoid to um to really get things off to the best start so thanks for your time as always dr robin thank you chelsea all the way from the uk yeah <laughs> it's uh, it's always uh fun getting our times right together isn't it evening yeah. for you morning for me but it works out That's okay right. hello to everyone <laughs> all around the world let us know where you're from and of course if you're pregnant a huge congratulations from us yes. both as well so, Robin, I want to get straight in and I want to talk about something, uh, one of one of the three things that we find women are questioning about, they're concerned about. And of course, you do mention this um, in your PhD research as well. So knowledge of breast milk production, um, how, how can that help women be confident in their body, um, having that knowledge prior to giving birth? I think I think, look, here I am. <laughs> I think it's important to have knowledge, right? I think it puts women in a much more, uh, uh, what, what, it's a warm space because they have the knowledge, right? And then what happens is that sometimes because you are the mother of the baby, us professionals think we might know best. Mm. And sure, we have a good education, but we the skill for me is applying um, my knowledge, my practice, my years of experience with beautiful women and babies is applying that to the unique mother and the unique baby, not as a global uh, education, you know, because no two people are the same in the world, let alone a mother and her baby. They're all different. And so for me, working with a mother, it's so important to be privileged to be able to work with her personally and, and work on a level where I actually, she shares her, her breastfeeding with me. So I can actually see what's happening and I can go through a whole feed. Look at your baby. I can go through a whole <laughs> feed with her um, if she chooses. There's no rules in my practice and there's absolutely no mathematics to what we do. And she's talking. She's distracting you, isn't she, Rob? She's talking. <laughs> Welcome Hello. to the Thompson Method, and you can bring the baby Hello. with you. <laughs> she says, Mummy, I can't see. I've got to twist my head. <laughs> there you go. That's better. Now she can join in. And Hello. I, think, I think that's one of the, the most special things for me personally, and I know it's the case for so many, with the Thompson method and and working with you directly is how you so make us feel so unique and listened to and respected and and when mm. I finally joined the online program it was the first time I ever felt like me as a mother I'm enough the knowledge I have the intuition I have is enough and you're just there to guide us the education the knowledge is mm. there to support what we already know really mm, you and do. having having that education um I mean, this time around with Grace, having it there in pregnancy did give me confidence. I felt so ready and I felt so prepared. And I knew within, even if I did hit some bumps in the road and challenges, which I haven't really, um, mm -hmm. that I would have the access to education and support there. And yeah, I work, I work on the basis of listening to a woman's self-knowledge and then observing quietly and carefully and talking with her. So it's about her. It's not about what the rest of the world does or how it's done. It's also me observing with my skills as well over a long period of time, you know. So if I was worried about a baby that I was looking at something, then I would, you know, ask some gentle questions that might lead into a discussion. Mm. But it's not something that it's overwhelming or um, exhausting for her. It's a general conversation that we have together. And there I'm listening to her maternal instincts too, because she drops those cues all the time. And quite often when I do the Q&A sessions, the last sentence is yeah. there's the answer. Yeah. She already it's knows. It's like our intuition has been buried deep within because, for example, with Jake yeah. my firstborn, the, the first time I ever breastfed, the midwife walked in and she said, oh, that doesn't look right. So you're automatically, you automatically feel like you're doing something wrong. That confidence is knocked. And, yeah. and it sounds like that is very common practice. Like you said, yeah. professionals do know what they're doing. They know lots. Um, 
but maybe maybe um we can look at how um they're approaching us um, yes, within those yeah. vulnerable moments so yeah. i and found it very interesting um how how many women don't um have that very important knowledge of how your body works to produce that precious liquid gold in particular within those first um first few days when your body has that really extra thick um amazing colostrum and how your body works to go into that milk volume peaking within the first 96 to sorry, 72 to 96 hours so i uh, would you agree that having knowledge can help you avoid oh, unnecessary yes. interventions if you understand that and you're in a situation where you don't have a major problem and that you can mm -hmm. move on with what you need to do, then you'll, you know from that knowledge that, you know, milk production takes time. It's not there in the breast. It might be for a mother who's had several babies and it'll come in a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But on the average, it's about 72, depending on the circumstances of the labour and birth too and the pregnancy. So those transitions are really important to breastfeeding transition one after the other they're normal transitions into what uh, then then the instinctive knowledge of the baby is to feed but again that depends on those circumstances too so for example if you had opioids you might have a sleepy baby and that's understandable because opioids you know do change the um how we work and how we think and also if for a tiny baby it's like I want to sleep and we see that all the time so there are things that I've learned over time having the privilege to have been with thousands of mothers and babies and seen and sat with them and it's a real privilege and and that's taught me much more than I ever knew before and certainly much more than I knew when I had my own babies yeah. and when I think about it now relatively I didn't know much at all <laughs> I highly doubt that, but I do believe that you know more now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely more now. And when I think about those wonderful women through the generations, through history, and what they did and how they went about their business with their babies was phenomenal. And we seem to override a lot of that now. We've lost a lot of those skills. And I feel sorry for the midwives around the world who cannot sit with women and work beside them and talk with them. And, and I have a problem when we stand over women because we shouldn't be standing over them because that's a dominant factor. Mm. And that then changes the mood, the whole sensory intact talk oh, discussion so that you have. And yeah. I think actually, so, so that was point number one, knowledge of breast milk production. I think, Dr. Robin, you've very perfectly transitioned into the next point, mm. which is planning for breastfeeding um, within your birth plan, within pregnancy, however you, you in yeah. your situation would like to approach that. So understanding yeah. that transition between pregnancy, labour and birth, yeah. like you just said, is, is it's really key. And, and being able to communicate your wishes that you would like yeah. to breastfeed and being yes. able to say that you would like to hold that space and have that privacy and that quietness, if that is what you wish to have, can make all of the difference. And of course, mm. Dr. Robin, one of the key principles of the TOPS method is understanding the importance of the three golden hours. Um, yeah. And I think I think you would obviously agree that planning for pregnancy. I mean, you have a birth plan template, don't you, available to download yes. for our club members. Talk about why you encourage women to to plan, plan, plan for breastfeeding as well as their birth during pregnancy. Well, I, I actually be being the midwife, you know, I'm for, for 50 years now and, you know, in the health system for 60 over 60 years, 61 years so far. I think it's really important to. Um, encourage the woman's knowledge be with her beside her watch her listen to her observe quietly and then be reassured by what she's choosing to do so when when we look at the birth plan template that then gives the the woman who's reading it a chance to be able to write into her plan what the things are that she might like she might add to she might delete from it it's not there for a for me giving a plan, it's a template for them to have that knowledge. And if they need more knowledge, then they can, um, you know, seek that knowledge as well. And I think, and I think it's really me, important. Sorry. Can I just finish? Sorry, it's, really important, yeah, it's really important to understand that a woman's pregnancy from conception is a journey that transitions from one thing to the other. It's not separate segments of her life. It's a, it's a complete picture of beauty of what she does. She does an amazing piece of work in the history of the human being. 
<laughs> and I read something recently, um, going off track a little here, but your words are very touching. So I have to I have to repeat the quote that I saw. Your body knows how to um, your body knows how to wee, it knows how to poo, your body knows how to fall pregnant. And sometimes um, that might be difficult, but essentially it knows how to grow that baby and it will know how to birth the baby too. And with the right education and the right positive yeah. attitude and the right support, you can definitely, absolutely, it's very likely that you'll be able to breastfeed too. And listening to yourself too, the woman listening to herself, it'll all come. And yes, of course, we have to make it very clear for the woman that does need help that there's you know the professional help that she needs it's important for that to be available for her and she will work that out in the way she needs to mm. and I don't have any rules with that it's all about what women women want and what their choices are mm. and um, the very famous Justine who's now left us in Australia she started what women want party mm. here in Australia very special and, indeed yeah very, very important yeah. so thing. that was that Fantastic was that now. yeah so I acknowledge her for that bless her and miss her terribly <laughs> yeah, of course and a very yeah. dear special lady that she was um to oh. us women as well to us pregnant birthing yeah. breastfeeding mothers yeah and into politics and what women want phenomenal you know people were listing men and I'm not going to go into all what she did, but she did an amazing, amazing amount of years of work to, uh, yeah. The and then, of course, women. world circumstances. Stand strong for us. Mm. Well, thank you for mentioning her, Robin. That's, that's yeah. And I think that's another reason why it's so important to have a, a birth plan that includes breastfeeding is to, to plan for those situations that may be unexpected, those circumstances and situations that, that aren't necessarily planned for. Because a lot of people will say, oh, there's no point in having a birth plan. Birth doesn't go to plan. You know, just go with the flow. But I think that's key of a, of, of a plan, isn't it? Is to plan for things yes. that, that may happen that you don't want that's to happen. Right. And have, yeah. have plan in place for what's happening, yep. for example, if Absolutely. you're separated. From mother, yeah, absolutely. Mother they have a plan in place. Yeah. yeah, and you do cover that in in the online resources. You talk qu quite extensively about what you can do if if you are separated from your baby, um, and and the many things that comes with that, as well as emotional and physical support as well. So I think that but I that think the important from importance from the professional's point of view is to accept that women have choices and they do have rights by the law of consent anyway in in Australia and then I encourage them to look up what the law of consent is in their various countries. Yeah, mm, yeah, for sure, absolutely, and and we haven't mentioned that, which is, is my bad, yeah. but it's very true to to mention researching your the laws, the law of consent, um, what your hospital policy policies are to understand that you don't have to necessarily follow those unless you want to um you know you can say no you can say no absolutely so that's that's a very good point that I'm that I missed <laughs> so no, the third point. These, these things come up so we don't um we we do sometimes forget a few things yeah. don't we Rob <laughs> but if you well, guys have what... any questions whilst you're watching or afterwards after the, after the live show has gone out do reach out we love connecting with you and um, we have Lots of information to share. And of course, we'll point you in the right direction as well. <clears throat> so point number one was knowledge of breast milk production and um, how that can help um, avoid um, unnecessary interventions. And um, mm -hmm. point number two was planning for breastfeeding during your pregnancy, um, including in a birth plan, if possible. Um, and that point number three is, is, I think, is probably one of the most important ones. That's probably because of my personal experiences. Um, but it's avoiding. Oh, yeah. Do you agree? Yes, you do, <laughs> is avoiding all forceful techniques and handling of your baby and your breasts. Now, Dr. Robin, you have extensive PhD research on this. Tell us a little bit about why you decided to cover this topic. Um, I, I, I was in a situation where I was so concerned about the number of women that were coming out of the hospital system with complications with breastfeeding. And I needed to know why. And I'd seen such horrific uh, trauma to nipples and breasts mm -hmm. and I have the photography to back that up thanks to those beautiful women who agreed for me to be able to photograph some of those traumas that that I was I was actually seeing and that led me to this you, you know this journey that I was presenting uh, my my findings at a at a conference and then there were some guru professors in the room one was emceeing the whole 
show. And anyway, there was a whole lot of gurus there. And then I was persuaded to think about what I needed to do with my work. And it took me a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, are we lucky that you and, dedicated that year? <laughs> yeah, because I was never really an academic. I was a, I loved what I did. I was a great practitioner, midwife. I loved everything I did, maternal and child health. And so I was able to look after mothers and babies between birth or well, pregnancy right through to school age so wow. I had that beautiful journey That's of being wonderful. able to do all that but anyway I've had a, a beautiful journey do, learning about academia too and also being having the privilege now of being able to do my PhD in a thesis but I have to add that since I finished uh, and was awarded my PhD in 2014 when I turned 70 I have not stopped learning. There are so many more things I have learned that's added to that, that time of experience as well. So I'm hoping to write some more about what those challenges and those experiences have been for me and for the women. You know, it's really interesting how time progresses and we learn more and more and more. And I'm very pleased that I learn something new every single day. <laughs> Well, I think it's wonderful that you've you've said that because I think that is the issue, isn't it? I think that yeah. a lot of our practices are outdated. I think that a lot of our um, precious midwives, which they are, they are almost um, um, obstetric nurses now, aren't they? And there seems yeah. to be a very medical uh, medicalized way, which we've spoken about very recently. So if you are interested yeah. in that, we will pop the link for that below. But breastfeeding, birth, pregnancy, it seems to be very medicalized now. And, um, and and the forceful techniques um, that, that we mentioned and, and the reason... Well, that's a history of about 50 years that started where uh, women were, um, you know, I didn't know any better either because I did all that. I learned all that myself. I didn't practice it because it didn't feel right, but I did learn about it. But, you know, handling a woman's breast and taking her baby by the base of the skull where the small brain is, that's not the way breastfeeding is meant to be. Uh, directing the nipple to the nose is one of the biggest problems. And when I studied the, uh, watching all this, saw the pictures, sat with so many women that were distressed, that I started to do the anatomical research, the functional research, the biophysiological research. And it all came together and there was the pictures there. So we should not be doing that. And a baby belongs to its mother. It doesn't belong to other people unless it has, and it doesn't belong to people either. It actually might need some help from some of the specialists, say the baby's APGAR score is seven or le less than seven, not seven. The APGAR score is seven or more. The baby belongs with its mother and it does not matter what she chooses or how she chooses to give birth it still belongs with her as long as she's well and she's prepared to take her baby and that we don't go doing things in a hurry, that we wait. We wait. There's nothing. It's not urgent or an emergency. We don't need to do anything. But my and gosh, don't they like to rush that part, though? I found that with, with Grace, you know a lot about our story. With both of our children, you have been there from the very beginning. And, and this time around, I cannot stress to those watching how much of a difference planning for breastfeeding, having education and support. It just made mm -hmm. a huge difference. And of course, we birthed um, Grace at home this time around, but we did have uh, midwives here um, from the hospital system. And that we were very rushed and there were there, there was a lot of times where I did have to practice saying no thank you no that's okay no 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 and and I, I I honestly although I'm aware I'm an empowered woman I honestly do not feel I'd have the confidence to do that if mm. it weren't for being in such an empowered community and having access to you and your knowledge and and just really being reassured that it's okay to do things the way you want to because we intuit we know how we want to do them anyway yeah, but what worries me from my um, midwifery colleagues' point of view is that we do need to have some of the past history of midwifery. That's mm. gone out the window since mm. it's been come, become institutionalised, mm. medicalised, right? So the midwives' mentoring is different now. And, and, and that's the saddest part for me, having, you know, the, the, you know my presentation, the isation syndrome, and I'm not going to go into that now. But, we have you know, covered that before, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very so, important to this. 
Yeah, so it's very important to understand that, you know, we really need those midwives that have the knowledge to be mentoring the, the, the new midwives coming and to be with them side by side, not leaving them alone to their own devices or, you know, bringing things in and telling them that they're, it's up to them now, they do what they... It's all, it's all not reasonable. And I do think if you can have a choice of a midwife and your midwife is with you for the entire journey that's better. We do have midwifery group practices growing, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll have the same midwife. Mm. And so that can change depending how many is in the group and how the group's set up, uh, who the group's attached to. But it does um, provide hospital backup really well for, for if it's necessary. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to have all that regardless when I was, you know, in my own practice. I had all that anyway, and I had the medical colleagues who we we just we just hit it off, you know. And our we we are there for a purpose, and that purpose is to be with that woman in her time of need, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I do wish we had the skills of the old midwives and what they knew and how they went about their practice. And I think the patients as well. Um, I, I here in the UK, we are very fortunate to have just the same as in Australia to have well, some parts in both of those countries have access to home birthing where they have fantastic connections with the hospital system. So in, in the case, the very unlikely case of an emergency, um, you can be transferred to the hospital um, via ambulance or like you've spoken about in our, one of our recent lives where the midwife themselves personally drives mum to hospital um but there are there are very many cases where um even at home we, we are hearing stories of women being rushed especially most particularly in that third stage um because of hospital policies which are governing them in their mm. job and and we appreciate um, as mm. professionals that actually there's they, they only can do so much as professionals in their role they're not open to change the rules of their job role so it's your place so to say no, if you really want to, please do say no. And, and if you want to learn more about how you can implement that breastfeeding plan, that birth and breastfeeding plan, you want to learn more about breast milk production and you want to get dive in deep to, to what Dr. Robin was talking about with her PhD research, avoiding those techniques and what techniques are beneficial for you and your baby, then do get in touch because it is literally at your fingertips. It is ready and waiting for you um, right now if you want it. Um, And and Dr. Robin, um, I just want to just talk again about the transition between pregnancy, labour and birth and and, and why you think it's important to to really understand the connection between those three. Because that the beautiful mother's internalizing all of that, right? So if we listen to her, she's sensing and feeling and she knows that her baby's growing. She knows that her baby's drinking because the baby has the hiccups every time it drinks. She knows all of those things that are happening. In the early part, it's very, you know, you just be learning as you go and unless you've had babies before and then you just move on with it, the baby grows. And then then it's really important that she understands that some the difference in what some women do. Some come into labour early, some don't. Some come into what's their normal gestational baby's age. And for me, that's very important if there's no problems because that means that baby has reached its maturity in the mother's uterus, which is really, really, really important. And um, uh, from my point of view, because that mature baby does much better with breastfeeding than the than the baby that's been. And that's another thing that is a discussion used. we've had because um, a lot of uh, induction rates are on 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 the rise, mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. a lot of these inductions are happening around thirty seven weeks. And with gestational dates not being one hundred percent accurate, a lot of these babies might be thirty nine weeks is the... born. Yeah, well, over here, some of them are being induced at 37. Uh, And and look, they're estimated dates. We don't know the exact. So the plus so many days is not accurate. No one can be that accurate unless a mother knows her absolute conception date. She might have an average out to the average has been calculated over the years at about 40 weeks. But there are some families that go to 43 weeks. There are some families that go to 42 weeks. And in my practice over 25 years, it was the average was 41.5 weeks. <laughs> so when the mother goes to term, she she does a pre-labor, she does an early labor, then she does an established labor. And once she starts to feel those senses, she starts to know what she's doing. Mm-hmm. 
and so and cool. and the baby's working with her they work together so mm -hmm. it's a transition so when we do intervene unnecessarily then we're changing that that interaction that the mother has with her baby mm -hmm. and and i think you know and you know some of the dominant behavior is really really overwhelming for the women and what worries me now is for so many women i'm talking with that have this they're mentally disturbed by what's happened to them and when they tell their stories even i'm horrified so yeah birth think, trauma is um mm -hmm. surprise not unsurprisingly on it on the increase as well as mm -hmm. medical interventions and that is something that professionals i feel really need to look at because Yes, mm. of course, baby being healthy, mum being healthy is the ultimate goal, but that's not the only thing that is important. No, and, and now I'm having over all this time the evidence, you know, of the women telling their stories and uh, it, it's it's a bit of heart rendering from a point of view when you're listening and that you, you haven't really experienced that yourself, but you know about it, mm. you mm -hmm. know, and you don't know how it affects that individual mother. Mm. So, you know, I'm working with a lot of women on that. I'm doing some debriefing as well. And uh, and I've been doing that for years, not just now. I've been doing mm. the debriefing for years. And, of course, birth trauma, um, birth birth is beautiful, but it's, it can sometimes be unpredictable. And, um, and, and birth trauma is sometimes going to happen. But it does mm. seem as though a lot of these um, really quite traumatic events can be avoided. Um, without the intervention and, and letting letting the mother be guided by her instincts and 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 really physiological birth if that's what mum chooses um mm. is is the way to avoid these these really traumatic events would you agree yeah. yes I, I, well i agree and i just think everybody is unique everything is mm -hmm. individual and uh, and yes we do have to be prepared and we have to be prepared when things don't work out well and we have to have that knowledge how to deal with that too mm. so uh, from the midwife's point of view that's extremely important but you also have the togetherness of the team and uh, and I was very fortunate to have you know that wherever I was practicing because I was known as the traveling midwife that there would be the, the team there would be if I needed help they would or the woman needed help and I was talking with her and we worked it out and I must say I never transferred once by ambulance we always were thinking ahead it's better to be you know moving than it is to be trying to rush so beautiful yeah. and absolutely yeah. beautiful and, and it was a very low transfer rate anyway but it's still that's because women were in control and they knew what they were doing but well, i was well, there. actually the research does support that the research research does state that home birth with low le low risk pre pregnancies <clears throat> excuse me is uh, is safe if not safer then giving birth mm. in hospital, there is a lower episiotomy rate, there's lower tearing rate, there's lower um, postpartum hemorrhage rate. The, 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 the studies are out there. There has been extensive research in 2020 on this. And um, yeah, it's very important that that women understand and have, have access to that research as well. So any Absolutely. last words, Robin? I, I, I don't know if you wanted to add anything. You have, as always, touched over everything perfectly. But is there anything that you are dying to say? Dying? No, I'm not dying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, might say, I might say that sometimes when I've left Mother Earth, but just no, a bit of my British mind. dramatic there. <laughs> I, I would just like to say that now I have a beautiful growing team of people who are learning the Thompson method. And I never called it that. My professors did. I have to be perfectly honest about that. That was never my cup of tea. Uh, I'll have English tea instead. Thank you. You're and too modest. <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason it's called the Thompson Method because it's not just yeah. a method. It's a movement that is helping thousands. My brilliant professors, they were brilliant, honestly. I would never have been able to do what I'm doing. And if it wasn't for my team now, my three at the top, Joanne, Jackie and Marie, they're brilliant. Then there's Rachel and people like you and there's... There's, oh, it's, it's there's so many, many, isn't there? Sarah yeah. and Kelly and, of course, and, all the others. There are so and many. And Tamika and all the people that do the admin work are just brilliant. But what's happening now is there's more and more people that are doing education, doing the education and there's another group that are practitioners that are, are actually... Uh, registered with a registering body you have to be a registered uh, like me a registered midwife registered nurse what but preferably 
with people that have looked after women who know and understand you know yeah the academy um, is is based it's not quite so new anymore we have lots of graduates no, now if, you, if you'd like to learn about becoming certified in the tops method um do let us know and uh, the, the next stage uh, the next stage sorry <laughs> the next group of academy students is opening up soon and there is there is some information that you can um watch um very shortly and um, that's free as well so do let us know if you'd like me to pop the link down below and, and, and that's off the team how exciting Sorry, those students are, are, are becoming to know each other around the world yeah. too so when it's they're so living exciting. in those communities they're making contact with it's 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 just beautiful but you know i have to say at the helm is my daughter and um you know if she hadn't have been breastfed <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> no, she's she's got she's got some sort of a magic i think she's a mensa that she she doesn't agree with that. Um, I think Jackie's a mensa. I think Marie's a musician, and <laughs> they are so very special. And and there's and something about the, that, the, the Thompson method, the width of the brain that can talk with people and and uh, make them feel nurtured and help them through whichever direction they want to go. And I wonder cool. where they get that from. And then there's Rachel, who's out there really in the education role there's no way I could do all that no way a fantastic researcher and a very very kind and special woman as well yeah so we've it's a magic team and I think um you know Kelly's had what six, five, six babies and Sarah's had two one popped out at home surprisedly <laughs> The midwife didn't make it. You know, no, yeah, she's, definitely a, a birth before arrival there. Yeah, we have she's a very, really very well. special and beautiful team. And, and actually, yeah. um, well, if you'd like to get to know Dr. Robin um, more, and we will be getting to know the team more over the course <laughs> of the year, but if you'd like to get to know, and you don't know this yet, Robin, this will come as a surprise to you, but next oh. week we'll be going live um, and to find out five interesting facts about Dr. Robin Thompson. So we are oh. going to turn things a little bit fun next week. So do join in oh. um, and, and let us know if you'd like to know anything, you know, is there anything that you'd like to know, get in touch. Um, but that has been our three top tips for um, newborn breastfeeding with the Thompson Method. And, and we hope you found that helpful. Um, do subscribe if you're watching on YouTube um, so that we can reach as many women as possible. And thank you so much. Dr. Robin, for your time Thank and your you. hard work. Thank you very Thanks. much too. We'll see you later. <laughs> Love you lots. See you.